Welcome to March 1961. Uh, we have in this issue we've got Ray, Rad Ray Bradbury, sorry, the Illustrated Woman. We have Ben Hyked, a jackpot of corpses. Barnaby Conrad, Tahiti, Ken Purdy, the Ferrari, has success, spoiled Marlon Brando. Shel Silverstein uh, is back with TVGBs, which he's done a couple of before. New Nudes in Hollywood Films, Playboy Panel with Mort Soul, Steve Allen, Lenny Bruce, and Jonathan Winters, Mike Nichols, Bill Danner, and Jules Pfeiffer. So this is a um, Playboy Panel on comedy. There's a little discussion there, which is an interesting read. So we'll start, as usual, with uh, the Playboy uh, the play bill, sorry. And we have the contents here, which we've just kind of run through at the beginning. Most of it is covered in here. There's a few other comics and bits. Uh, Charles Beaumont, we've got I Have the Spirit of the Stairs by Ray Russell. So we'll continue through. Usual ads, as you can remember. I've got Walkers in here for this month. Lucky Strike, I think they've been in the magazine once before. Obviously an iconic um, cigarette. I always remember them from sponsoring... Um, motorcycle racing i think there was on a, a particular motorbike i can't remember which one it was but it was uh the lucky strike um was always on there i do remember it quite clearly but i'm probably wrong for some reason but you may have to check that um we'll go through these bits here usual records for sale i've uh, got capital records here lots of books and the ads are huge and interestingly i was what reading the um, biography of hugh hefner again the other day and it talks about his um the way he was going to fulfill the magazine and you know how he's going to promote it and what was eventually going to be there and one thing it mentions in the biography is the pull of advertising the amount of advertising he could get in from Hugh Hefner's experience working in other magazines and um, sort of publishing companies he knew there was a big pull uh, for adverts for this type of magazine a kind of men's magazine so he knew from the outset if he could get the the magazine off the ground that the adverts would flow in and that's where the money would be um, because I guess the subscription cost is kind of part of it but the advertising really bulks up the fees so that obviously helps get the magazine going and brings in huge revenues especially if you can license things as well like playboy merchandise etc which was a major part of the 80s and 90s magazines which kind of in a way ruined it uh, when the magazine went solely for branding and which it does today so this is uh, something new get set for your Greatest Vacation, Playboy Tours. So that's quite interesting. They're branching out into those kind of um, sort of holiday and lifestyle um, sort of packages. And we've got Playboy Club News. So obviously we've had the Chicago um, Playboy Club open. And then we've got Playboy Club set for New York City. Seven story building purchased. Um, LA Club to add 140 guest rooms. And then we've got a little bunny feature. So again, they're trying different things, trying to promote the clubs. Um, and I've said it before, but if you are near a Playboy Club, you should go as soon as you're able to outside of this uh, lockdown. It's definitely worth a visit. The Playboy panel, hip comics and the new humour. So in this we have panellists Steve Allen, Lenny Bruce, uh, Bill Dana, Jules Pfeiffer, who's the cartoonist, Mike Nichols, Mort Sol, who is still alive today, I believe, and still does uh, comedy, but a prolific, I think, writer and, and comedian and Jonathan Winters as well. So you'll meet Seymour Soul here, Winters, uh, Nichols. So a nice little um, piece on, on comedy here. Uh, we'll go on to the next part, which is the Playboy Advisor. So again, the kind of agony aunt for Playboy. And then we have, uh, this is Charles uh, Williford, who again was a, a good writer. Uh, the Machine in Ward 11. Um so a little story there. I'm not too familiar with his work. I've seen pieces, but um, I don't know much more um, than what he's written here, to be honest. Um, I can't memorize any of the other stories and articles I've read by him. Gay and Wilson here. Motordom's Magnificent Machine is a winner in every sense. The Ferrari, and this is Modern Living by Ken Purdy. Uh, again, I don't know the models of these Ferraris that you can see here. I guess this is a GTB, something like that. Um, but it is in the article. I like this one here, actually. I really like this uh, Ferrari. I think this is, um, I think it's a GTB. I'd have to double check that, but um, I haven't read the actual article on this yet. And then we've got Ben Hike, and this is uh, a jackpot of corpses. A good egg, uh, Thomas Mario, on the art of coddling your guests with, with uh, shared, shared delights. And we've got Jerry Tolmer. 
the tragic metamorphosis of an actor into a movie star. Uh, and this is about Mar Marlon Brando. Uh, and as it, you know, the, the title kind of uh, explains everything, but it's an interesting piece, obviously a, a, a big actor um, who, uh, you know, is famous for Godfather, I guess is probably his most, most famous role. Uh, and there's a piece in here about him. So I like these little fashion picks here. It's all the new sort of uh, uh, winter wear sort of rainproof things all that kind of thing on the scene we've got um william de kooning and cesar balsa fiction ray bradbury this is the illustrated woman a uh, few men could ask for more than emma willingly gave willie so ray bradbury still appearing in the magazine more cartoons this is our playmate without reservation uh, indian maiden miss march is a modern dance delight uh, and this is um tonya cruz and i believe she actually died in an accident in 1966 automobile accident and if you actually google that name and car accident there was a recent one as well same name tonya cruz uh, who died in an accident i was getting confused i thought she was still alive and passed away uh, sort of recently in this accident but no it was actually back in uh, 1966 so it's obviously um horrible to think that only a few years later um she had uh, passed away but a nice pictorial here here she is on set as well. Playboy's Party Jokes. Uh, again, you should take a look through some of these jokes. I have started reading some of these more. Um, and there are some actually quite good jokes appearing. I'm going to try and expand on that a little bit more, which will be on the Patreon. Uh, and I'll go into the Patreon just at the end of the video. Um, and this is, uh, I think, Robert L. Green again with a tire. So this is um, a, ban a, a, banity, a banity afoot, sorry. Um, for some reason I was reading that wrong so nice selection of shoes and we have Charles Beaumont uh, more cartoons Ericsson and then we've got Tahiti the jewel of Oceania casts a haunting spells on those who have the temperament to yield its seductive beauty so Barnaby Conrad uh, here with this little uh, piece on Tahiti Ray Russell uh, improve your conversation um, this brand new easy way I have the spirit of the stairs. So a little piece here from him. Uh, John Dempsey with this little cartoon here. This jet age is amazing. Just think I had breakfast in New York, lunch in San Francisco. And here he is in the, uh, where this would be, I guess the, not Caribbean, but kind of um, perhaps like West Indies or, or something like that. Uh, this is the new nude wave in Hollywood, a little pictorial. And this is, we talked about censorship before, how the censorship was quite prominent in Hollywood. European films were being censored. Um, obviously, it looks like this isn't the case anymore. Films are starting to show a bit more nudity because it's good for box office sales. And what better way to um, change laws than to have something that actually makes money. And you'll find that the law changes very quickly um, when it can make money. So there's very influential people who back these films, back the studios, and they can influence law changes to get things through, which I expect is what happened, especially if the box office is uh, quite stagnant. That's the way to do it. Um, we have Vargas again, Alberto, Alberto Vargas, uh, excellent pinup artist, one of the best. Um, and that's another nice little drawing here. Ribald Classic, uh, son of TVGBs. And this is uh, the one you've seen before by Shel Sil Silverstein. Uh, more cartoons. This one's featured quite a bit, kind of like the the ruler, this kind of emperor uh, in the Middle East with all these kind of ladies around him. So more continuations of the other stories. And just to let you know, the Patreon is now up and running. If you go to Patreon dot com forward slash ten nine um you can sign up for eight pounds plus vat per month there is a, a tax which we have to apply because i'm based in the uk and this is going to be the foundation for the ten nine magazine and it's going to be a place where i can expand on more things playboy and have more discussions with you and we can share more images uh, and it's kind of more of a club for the people who are serious about Playboy, obviously on YouTube, I get quite a few views on here, but most people are looking for just Playmates generally. Some people comment, people have emailed me, which is very nice. But the actual 10.9 Patreon is where we can have a real conversation, a real club. We can get people on and interview them and have discussions about uh, everything Playboy. Uh, nothing 
uh, uh, missed, no stone unturned. We're going to go through everything relating to Playboy. Uh, and if you are a Playboy fan, you can sign up there, like I say, for £8 um, plus VAT per month. And I will make it worth the while. Um, you know, I will spend a lot of time doing these. You know, these videos take up a couple of hours every night and obviously reading the magazine. So it is a, um, a pleasure to do it. Um, but to make things really good fuel I, I really um sort of have to charge because in that way i can invest more money into better production and into getting people to produce for the magazine um and get things up and running so if you're a fan of playboy um especially in sort of 50s 60s 70s even 80s uh, and you're kind of disappointed where playboy has gone today um, i will take you back we're going to go back and do things um much more simply and take back the the basics of what playboy was a kind of classic liberalism in a way and that's where we're going to carry on so this is the final part of the ferrari article i can actually see in here a 250 gt ferrari so um i think that's probably one of the cars that features on the front you'll know a bit more than me i'm not a, a huge car person uh john dempsey here will you please stop taking me down will you please stop taking down what i'm saying um, so again, the sleazy old boss with the younger secretary, and that's a common theme, I think, is um, the mockery, I think. It's more of a mockery to me of the old men who want the younger women. Um, so that's featured heavily. Females by Cole, and this is obviously Jack Cole, cocktail napkins. So they're selling these. And I think we're done. Uh, so head over to the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash 109. You can sign up for eight pounds plus VAT per month. So there's going to be some updates coming this week, just some initial videos before I really start getting the content on there in the next couple of weeks. But you'll be able to contact me through Patreon as well. I'll invite some of you on for discussions if there's things that you want to talk about, which you, I expect you probably do. And I'm looking for kind of older guests. If you're over 60, I would like to speak to you because you've been probably reading this magazine um, during its, its prime. And you can remember being around at the time when these magazines were was released, which is um, you know interesting for me and probably for a lot of other people as well. So that's us done for this month. I'll see you in a couple of days for uh, another episode, which will be uh, April uh, 1961. So enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you soon.